Here is a way of painting a rainy day scene in watercolour. Have you found it difficult to paint a wet day or a dull day? What's your technique for painting rainy scenes? Hello, I'm Tim Wilmot, a watercolour painter, and I produce full length video tutorials with commentary, which will help you improve your watercolour techniques and hopefully create some great looking paintings. So in this video, I'll cover the complete process. So stick around. Uh, the complete process of painting a watercolour from start to finish. I'll give commentary along the way. There'll be no annoying background music in this video. So a rainy day scene. This is, the location is La Spezia in Italy. Let me just take you into a map of the scene. So here is the northern part of Italy and there is La Spezia there and I've gone in with Google Street View and this is where I was um, in October and uh, a scene near the port and harbour. It's uh, a very pretty um, port area with lots of cruise ships that come in. Um, it's a fishing port as well, leisure craft also. Uh, it was October, uh, totally unlike the, the scene we've got here, totally, the, the weather conditions totally unlike um, this uh, Google um, Street View scene here. This is a sunny day, mine was a rainy day, and uh, it was cold as well. So I took shelter in this little cafe here. I was actually sat just there to the right of the doorway and did a, a, a couple of plein air paintings there. Let me just show you one of them. I was actually, so I was sat there and I was looking just into the corner of the port. So this is looking towards the town. You've got a row of uh, palm trees, a park, then the town rising up um, behind that. So let me just take you into um, the plain air I did. So this is, this is what I did on the scene and I was soaking wet, um, pretty cold and uh, just took shelter, grabbed a coffee and um, painted this scene, uh, one of two. But the paper was damp and the, the, the atmosphere was humid, so everything took a long time to dry and it stumbled on me that this, this would be a way, I know, I, I know of some watercolour artists that paint, deliberately paint on damp paper to start with. They pre-wet the paper. I don't, if you see any of my videos, I don't do that. Um, it's on dry paper, it's been, it's not pre-wetted at all. Um, but this was a damp day and my paper was wet to start with. Uh, so so I, I thought, well, let's just explore this a little bit more. And I, I took a photo looking the other way. So this is looking into the town. There was a little fishing boat there. I, I decided to, um, th there were one or two brighter spells. So I thought, well, let's try and capture that. But it's still, hopefully... Um, giving the appearance of a drizzly day, people with umbrellas, that's always a good good thing to include in a street scene to portray a rainy day, uh, uh, some umbrellas and parasols, parasols and things. Um, but there was there was this little fishing boat. I thought, well, let's grab a little bit of light on top of that fishing boat there. But everything else is, is soft, little soft edges. Um, maybe not too many values in the scene as well. That can always be a good thing to... Um, to think about is no, no massive areas or huge areas of uh, differences of contrast. And then going to the background, just disappearing, very soft, um, soft edges as well. So this is the scene looking the other way, if you like, out to sea. Um, it was drizzly rain. It wasn't hard rain, drizzly rain. It was brightish, but on the whole, um, fairly dull, and, and a scene which, on the face of it, you think, well, this this would this would be a very boring scene to paint. Um, but I do occasionally like painting just ordinary scenes. You just sit somewhere um, in a street scene. You sit somewhere. You locate somewhere comfortable, and you look around you, and you draw what you see. You paint what you see. Um, so that's what I've decided to do in this video is just take a very ordinary scene, probably something that 99% of people would not paint at all, 
Um, so if your if your idea of painting is a pretty cottage or something like that, then probably this video isn't for you. Um, but if if you want to just stick around and and see my take of some techniques of painting a rainy day scene, then uh, this you you hopefully you'll you'll pick up something from the way I've done it. So what we've got here are a row of plant pots um, uh, that, if you like, is sort of leading the eye um, further up the scene. There's a car there. But then just beyond, just behind that, there's these fishing boats, the backs towards us, and these are the tall cranes on the backs of the boats that are, that are lifting up um, all of their fishing um, crates and um, pots and so on. And there's lots of rigging and details um, between the pots and the boats. There are some palm trees here. Um, I actually know what these are called. These are called Butea capitata. It's quite a, they're quite a cold, hardy palm, but they've been stuck in these pots. Um, one or two of them are quite miserable. Um, going back to uh, the Google Street View, the, this is probably the one that um, was on its way out and it's finally uh, given up the ghost there. But these two look fairly healthy. Yep, so some palm trees, um, rigging. I'll include a figure in the scene as well. Uh, we've got a nice bit of framing. This, this is the top of the cafe where I, I took shelter and we can just see the um, a table there. So I'll make, I'll make more of that. So if you imagine we've got some tables along the, the, the foreground, bottom right corner there, the rooftop, um, top right corner. Yeah, should be, should make for an interesting painting. And my take on trying to create the atmosphere of a dull day, a rainy day, lots of soft edges. Now, if you want to keep seeing my reference photo, photo as I paint the demo, open this in another tab on your browser. Uh, go to this same video in that new tab and pause it on the opening minutes where, I, where I'm showing this, this picture in full screen. Um, or better still, and excuse the plug, if you join my Patreon scheme, uh, which is patreon.com, so www.patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot, I produce a number of painting projects for my members up on my Patreon site, where I share the high resolution images, my painting, and give a lot more, give a few more tips as regards how to attempt that scene. Okay, so let's make a start. So the paper I'm using is Saunders Waterford, cold press, uh, so that's medium texture, and it's 300 grams, so it's not the heaviest uh, weight paper. Uh, probably, that's a good point actually, probably heavier paper um, might be better for a wet day scene painting because uh, we're going to be we're going to be giving a lot of abuse and uh, make it quite wet and um, going in with some heavy painting. So uh, probably best to go for some heavy pa heavy heavier weight paper rather than lighter weight paper. And it's secured, taped down with painters DIY masking tape. Probably best to get some good quality because uh, what I'm going to be doing shortly will test the integrity of this tape. So it's got to be good quality um, tape that's not going to be easily um, removed. Good, uh, good adhesive qualities. So step one, the outline drawing and these three pots, a little bit of a an exercise in perspective with these pots going into the distance, getting smaller. I've decided to settle on three pots rather than four or two or five. I think that's um, probably about right. But from a composition point of view, 
I'm adding in the car and I'm going to add in a figure as well. So there's going to be five main things along that middle area there. So here's my figure. I always start off with the heads first of all, and then the shoulders, body of the figure. So perhaps this this is a a figure just just a, a fisherman maybe attending his nets and uh, looking towards us. I'll cross hatch the the actual uh, face there just to give an indication of whether this figure is looking towards us or looking away. And then we have the first, on the left hand side, the first crane, if you like, at the back of the boat. Um, just an indication of these palm trees, Beautia capitata. I think they hail from South America or somewhere. Um, obviously uh, grown now in Europe. And we've got the jetty, the side of the harbour, slight angle going away from us, bit of paraphernalia in front of that figure. So I don't need to think about any legs for that figure. Um, being covered with the um, being covered with the uh, netting. Right, second boat and a third boat. They're sort of behind those palm trees, just lurking behind the palm trees, and then going up to the right. Um, very briefly, there is a bigger a bigger boat on that right hand side. So there's the top right corner, the frame, and then bottom right corner, a couple of tables, just the corners of the tables, just to give the impression that we're we're sat under cover, getting shelter um, from the rain. And then there's my uh, lines of the, uh, the, the pavement, just to help us um, go into the scene as well. So that's the initial drawing done. Getting in the main shapes, making sure the drawing is perfect before I embark on the next step, a bit of painting, but before painting. So this, this is the first thing I wanted to introduce to you. And as I said at the start, I know some watercolour painters, they do pre-wet their paper um, and then they start painting. I've done the drawing first with a soft pencil, just getting the main lines. And now I'm very gently with a flat brush or a hate brush, just wetting the entire paper surface. Now this is where good quality watercolour paper comes in because if you've got um, cheap paper or not good quality paper then you can you can damage the surface by by doing this by adding in a lot of moisture and brushing over it uh, quite easily the uh, the paper surface degrades and you end up with a horrible mess and bits of paper coming off um, not so with good quality paper like Saunders it's uh, very absorbent and which is what you want you want you want paper that's going to be retaining its moisture for a long time while you're while you're painting the scene, depending on how fast you're going to be painting, you want it to be uh, quite moist. So I was using, or I'm using this flat brush or a hate brush. You could use a sponge, um, gently. Use a sponge to go over the whole scene. But it needs to be fairly uniform, even over the whole surface. And we're getting to, we're getting to, um, a level of wetness where it's it's I would say it's sort of moist or damp so there's just a slight you might be able to see there with a bit of reflection on my on my light on my studio light a little bit of um, glare uh, so that's that's really what we want just that little bit of glare if you look at it against the the sunlight just see just try and detect a little bit of um, 
layer coming towards you. And that would be probably about right. Uh, and then we've got to work fairly, fairly quickly um, by starting with our painting. And this day, the, a dull day, you've got very few values to work with. Probably the sky is going to be the same value as, a, as the road or a street. And so it's the case in this scene. So you've got to, you've got to look a little bit more closely, be a bit more observant and try and pick up some, some value changes, um, colours as well, the warmth of a colour. I'm going for a sky that's a sort of bluey grey. So I've picked up a bit of cerulean blue. Um, anything from the palette from the previous painting, just add it into, add it into that. But I'm getting quite a, a sort of bluey grey mix. And I want to go warmer for the foreground. And then the pots, they're a sort of yellowish, creamy colour. So I've got three, I've got sort of three main colours to think about. Cool sky, warm uh, foreground, and then these yellow pots. Now I'm going over the outline of my drawing don't need to be too precise with that. And I've gone over the top right, the top right corner where the, the dark canopy is going to be. That's going to be a hard edge there. But I want these soft edges. So everything damp, I'm adding more moisture into it now as I'm, as I'm uh, painting in there. I've, got, I've tried to paint carefully around the figure. It doesn't matter if it's not too accurate. Um, I went over the, the, uh, the flower pot, the, um, the plant pots. And now with this mop brush, I'm using a Raphael soft aqua mop brush uh, but any mop brush would do again quite soft have a brush that's quite soft not too hard uh, something that's for that is meant for watercolor and then uh, with those pots now, i don't have a cream color as such so i've just gone in with a sort of yellowish color oh, i should point out the um the palette to you um, on the right hand side of the palette running from the top i've got neutral tint a sort of like a dark grey colour, uh, not black, dark grey, and burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, viridian, cobalt green, uh, cerulean blue, cobalt blue in the middle, ultramarine blue coming down, alizarin crimson, a bright red, which the winds are red, a light red, cadmium orange, and a lemon yellow. Now, along the foreground also, I I made those stripy lines with a few little gaps. You can see how soft those edges are in those white lines along the, the pavement, uh, just to give that, that soft feel to the scene. And then I am working on a slight slope here. Maybe the paper is about 10 degrees or so, something like that, on my in my studio. If I'm painting plain air, I might actually be um, a steeper angle. In fact, on the day, I didn't have an easel at all. I just had a, a very bit of a very simple bit of Corex board, uh, which is a lightweight plastic uh, board, and take my paper to that. So I didn't have an easel at all, and just sat down, propped it up against the table and, and started painting at the back of the cafe there. And being a, a really wet and cold, miserable day, I was pretty much the only person in that cafe. And uh, so nobody's going to bother you. You're there painting away. And not, the nice thing about a wet day is you've got a long time to think about things um, as regards your painting and the, the approach. Whereas on a hot day, You've got to work really fast, otherwise your, your paper's drying really quick. And sometimes with watercolour, you do want to mix things around. You do want you want things to just settle in there and blend around, and you don't want things to dry too quickly. It does. It does. It probably does help actually working with a a painting like this. If you can work in a if you can stand it working in a colder room or something anywhere that's fairly humid, so things aren't going to dry too quickly. You've got longer time to um, work your way. Now, 
things are going to dry a lot lighter. So I'm just getting in a bit of sort of soft reflections of the um, of these pots. As I said earlier, if you want to keep um, going back to my source photo as a reference, then uh, open up another tab in your browser. Um, in Chrome, you can right click over the tab and do that. And then launch this video again, um, but pause it on the opening few minutes where, where I show the picture in full screen. And then you can actually um, just tab, just click on the tab to go back. Or you could open up another window and just have it have it above this if you want to being slightly more sophisticated so um, yeah easy ways of uh, keeping this reference photo open now over on the right hand side I'm starting with the background and I'll be using this brush this smaller brush now quite a lot so I've started off with a mop brush quite a big mop brush as big as I have for the size of paper um, to get in quickly and softly all of the underlying uh, colors and then this this paper is still very damp and with a smaller brush now with with actually not too much water on the brush your my my, my um, water bucket is over to the right hand side and I probably won't be going over there too much unless I'm just washing out the brush or I do do need some some uh, extra moisture in the, in the paint. Use the fingertips as well just to smudge things along, get those soft edges. So it's primarily here, small, small brush, small synthetic brush. And now I'm getting those, you can see I'm getting those soft edges, hopefully a feeling of uh, this rainy day. I haven't done many rainy day scenes. Uh, maybe I'll do a, a few more of them as I try and um, improve my technique. I'm not a one to uh, follow, to be honest with you, I'm not a one to follow a lot of other painters. So I'm pretty sure um, rainy day scenes, there must be loads of them up on YouTube. And everyone's different take on uh, on a rainy day scene. Um, some may even go for hard edges. I'm going for soft edges. And the way to do that is, as we've done here, damp paper. And, and then paint, which is not too thick. But when, you, when you've got good quality paper and it, it uh, soaks in there and the water soaks in, it's all still very damp. You get these lovely, lovely little soft edges appearing with the brush. Now, we've got a very complex scene behind the pots with all these boats. And the more you look at the scene, the more detailed you're going to see. So, you, yes, we have to look at the photograph for reference purposes or if we're doing plein air. We're constantly looking at the scene, but not too much. What we're trying to do here is give the impression of a dull day. Um, it's not going to be an accurate depiction of fishing boats. We just want the impression of some, some of these fishing boats moored up there. It's not a great day for fishing, I guess. Uh, so they're in port, they're moored up, and it's, they're just shapes. Now, I've noticed on the left-hand side, things were drying a little bit too quickly. Uh, I'm painting in a, a heated um, in a heated room. And uh, so I've just sprayed now the left-hand side. I've got a, li a very little tiny spray bottle. As you can just see some of the marks it's made there on the left-hand side. I just need a, a little spray bottle with a fine spray just to mist things, a fine mister, uh, to keep that, that side quite wet. I, wouldn't, I won't paint 
on that side straight away. It's maybe just a little bit too wet, but I just um, very gently just put this fine mist spray over that um, over that left hand third. And you can see some of the little speckles, little marks it's made in the foreground as well, which doesn't matter. It would be difficult to go in with my clear brush, some clear water and a brush again, because the danger is you're gonna you're gonna be wiping off some of the paint um, on that left hand side. So it, it has to be this gentle mister um, on that left hand side. So now going back to the middle area, just applying a few more darks with this brush and some dark objects behind these pots. So this will give them a bit of definition. Uh, the lip under that pot there, top of the pot, the trunk of the palm tree, And then for the leaves, I'm just mixing a bit of cobalt green, a bit of viridian green. Probably need to go a bit darker, pick a bit of burnt sienna. That's quite a nice green. If you've got a green, you've got some green paint with a brown, that makes a, a nice foliage um, colour. So to create convincing palm tree fronds, I've just put in a slight painted a slight arch and then just flicking the brush um, from the from that line and uh, just to create the impression of these little little leaves there and they'll they'll go fairly soft the paper's still quite damp on that side we don't want any the last thing we want is any particularly hard edges in this. Now the middle pot, the lip under the rim, And the leaves, the uh, the, the uh, fronds of the palm tree, uh, maybe have it slightly different from the the first one. So they're not too too identical. And with palm trees you've got all this top growth and then the narrow sort of crown perhaps a few stems of the uh, of the leaves there is a horticultural term for that I forget it <laughs> the, um, they're not branches as such the PTO, PTOs or something like that. I think it begins with P. Um, so it just it looks a little bit different from that right hand palm tree. Just continue on painting the background boats. Um, so here's the first crane on the back there. So I'm now just be on that, that left hand edge, I'm just beginning to get into that damp patch where I sprayed it with the mister, that fine spray. You can see it's starting to move ever so slightly um, either way and it's giving me that, that soft edge. This brush has actually got quite a good point to it. So you could use a rigger brush for this. Um, some of these 
little bits of ropes and rigging that's um, around the place. Um, I've got, as I say, I've got quite a good edge on this brush. Pick off a little hair. Now with all the netting that's behind the pots, I don't want to, in this scene, I don't want to paint in all the individual pieces of rope and knots and so on. I just want to give the impression of something, um, some objects there behind no no details at all and I'll paint over the masking tape just to continue the line on so there's no when I peel off the tape there's gonna be no nasty uh, gaps where the paper is showing along that edge uh, the these right hand boats are still that air is still a little bit damp. And those masks in the distance, you can do a bit of lost and found. So that vertical mast, uh, just a, a very brief line drawn with the the paintbrush. And it, there's gaps in it because we've got a we, we don't have a very it's not very moist at all. We very quickly draw that line and it's got gaps in it. It's got a bit of a, um, as I say, lost and found. And that then gives the impression again of distance. Um, it's loose. It's, it's not too exact. So think about lost and found in this also. Right, back to this middle boat and painting around this figure. So I'm in introducing some values into the painting with this figure, this light figure, uh, against a darker background. So it will be something to play with. Up to the left hand edge of the middle pot, just with that darker colour, so it's going up against that pot now. Probably got too hard an edge on these pots, so I'm going to have to um, do a bit of smudging or add in some darker values just to the, the edges of the pots, just to break up the, the hardness of that line. But meanwhile, just crack on doing the this middle ground. And the final pot on the left hand side. So with the fine mist I, I put in there, that's giving me a, a softer edge already to the, the rim of this pot and then darker still Paint in the face, bit of light red and cadmium orange, and then the bottom of the figure. A 
Oh, that figure could actually be be left. I'll probably uh, probably put in some legs. Now, left hand boat. Very brief lines to describe the the crane at the back and um, a few horizontals. and pot on the left hand side. So I've resuscitated this plant, it's now living again. That's the thing with anything natural is like trees, bushes, shrubs, you just sort of make them up because they're all very temporary things, they, they're growing, um, so you can just change things to suit the composition move move things left and right make them larger make them smaller just to suit the composition and i thought the composition with this one is primarily these these five things the three pots the figure and that car and then just these these lines and shapes behind that to define define the um the these fishing boats there is this, I'm not sure what this was, this dark object could have been a, a waste bin or a litter bin or something on the left hand side, but I've kept it in there. I think it um, served a purpose to sort of form a, in a way, a little bit of a boundary on the left hand side, uh, because there is a bit of a sort of gap between the left hand edge of the left pot and the, the left hand edge of the painting. So just sort of fill in, fill in that gap, not dead centre, just slide it to the right of the middle of that. And I think that just helps the composition a bit. Right, some lines for the pavement, which will help us, will help the viewer's eyes go into the scene, just helps with perspective and distance. So I'm pretty much, all, I'm almost following the, uh, the lines I drew in initially. So you can see now the the sky has gone lighter, the foreground's gone lighter. <clears throat> so that's what I said at the, at the beginning, you've got to go darker, you've got to go darker than you than you think um, to, to compensate with the, the way that watercolour dries. So around the cranes, there's pulleys and rigging and so on. I need to uh, get that in. Back to the pavement, a few horizontals just here and there. Not every single one, just a few. I've decided to paint in the legs of that figure. I could have, I could have left them unpainted actually. It was all right before, but may, maybe more appropriate wearing darker, darker trousers. You 
connecting up with the pot. And as I did on the uh, right hand side to continue over the tape so when I peel off the tape it's going to be a nice crisp edge, nice left hand edge to it. You can tell the paper's beginning to dry now because the paint isn't spreading as it was a few minutes back so there's going to be a few little hard lines now with this with this rigging but overall we've got the feeling of softness There aren't many paintings when I'm actually using this small brush for a majority of the painting. Normally, uh, if you see my other videos, it's a mop brush or different sizes of mop brushes. So this is uh, quite unusual for me, but I think it, I think it works quite well. few little curved marks there to indicate maybe a, a part or a little bit of rigging. There is actually quite a, a very dark patch to the right of that figure, so I'll put that in shortly. So these lines either side of the pots, they're just helping to define those pots a bit more. Back to the figure. Give, give this figure some arms. Now I've just picked up some clear water there. I went in with the with a bit of brown, but it was a little bit too dark in value. I want that I want the um, I want that figure to be slightly lighter than the background and just a just a, a hint of a little bit of light hitting the head and the shoulders Now just in the crown of these palm trees there is a little bit of darkness so I'm going in with some darker values just to give a bit more form to them so they're not too not too flat in appearance a few stalks of the uh, leaves i remember what they're called shortly. Be careful not to go over the head. Just adding a few more smaller lines now, it's just smaller details to these boats. I'm 
I'm trying to paint what I see, not what not what I think is there, but just now and again looking at the reference photo. There's a balance really. Looking at the photo just for a bit of inspiration and picking up the impression of the scene, but not overdoing it and you, so that you're noticing all the portholes and every single piece of rigging and pulleys and so on. Um, there's a there's a balance to it which just just comes with practice and your own particular style whether you're whether you're a, a loose style or a, um, a a tighter style of painting Imagining it's just a little bit wet on the surface. I've added a bit of reflections. For some of the dark, darker objects between the pots. Trim up that left hand edge of the pot with just a little bit too far extending out to the left. So these pullers and just a bit of rigging across the scene. A few little dots now with the brush it's just that's just the way the way I my, my own particular style with this brush just uh, adding in at this stage of the painting a few little brush marks here and there to give the impression of some movement in things or in a street scene bits of litter and chippings and something like that. I'm getting towards the end of the painting. I obviously need to... I have got the top right corner and the bottom right corner to do, which I'll go back to a bigger brush to do that. Uh, some tail lights for the car. not much red in the scene but I've just dabbed in a few bits of red on the boats it could be um, something in the structure or you do often find a, a few quite quite bright reds on boats there could be the fenders could be um, a life boy uh, the um, sonar or radar system that could be red as well so here's the top canopy of the cafe where I, where I was uh, sheltering under and a good straight edge with a big mop brush. Nothing too detailed. Over to the edge, over the masking tape and then something very quick. In the bottom right corner. This didn't feature too much in the source photographs so I'm sort of having to make it up just give the impression of these tables and some legs. And with that smaller brush, bit of water. It's this is down in the bottom right corner, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. And the danger is the more I'm fiddling about with it, the more it's going to become a feature of the painting. I just want to be very simple. And uh, I do often make the mistake of including too many things around the borders of a painting. And I want the, with, with a painting, I think you need to have most of the 
attention in the middle portion of the painting, um, but but not on the extremities of the painting or the the corners of the painting or down the down the left hand side or the right hand side. So got to be a bit careful. Of course, the big, the big danger with any painting, particularly with watercolour, is knowing when to finish. And I'm struggling, struggling with that now. I could go on adding in more and more to the scene, but. Part of me is saying, just keep it really brief. There's some reflections of those cranes in the back of the boat. So I hadn't drawn those in, just, just think it needed it a little bit more. Now a few little lines there just to depict maybe a few raindrops uh, and that's the big question do you actually paint in rain or do you just give the impression of rain with some with some diagonal marks like this or some way of rendering the um, the background uh, to depict that that sort of the, the sh these, these shards of raindrops coming down so I've just gone for a few little diagonals there just to say that you know this this is this is a little bit of rain now um these pots i do need to add a little bit of darkness to the sides And with this figure, I'm I'm mucking about with the legs now. Really, I should have. I think with hindsight, I probably should have stopped adding another layer on the trousers. I think you've got to be your own critic, uh, best critic when it comes to paintings. You. You, you know the process you've gone through. You do a little debrief at the end of the painting. You think, well, what could I have done better? What um, what were the main problems, the challenges? How, how could I improve things the next time round? And uh, just try and every painting you do, just try and be half a percent or one percent better than the last painting. Hopefully things get better you uh, hone your your techniques So I've put in a vertical there. Let's put in the reflection of that vertical. A few lines on either side of the pots. Just spotted a pulley I could put in. 
maybe another one on the left hand boat as well. few more verticals I think every painting needs some strong lines somewhere a strong vertical or a strong horizontal use the uh, use my fingertips a little bit just to smudge things or I'm almost I guess I'm almost lifting off as I paint in there I think well I've done I put too much paint on there so just quickly do a bit of smudging with the fingertips Is that darker area I think it just needed it in there to add a bit more definition to the top of the netting that was in front of that figure and a bit more definition to the uh, fishing boat darker line against the table and the canopy at the top. Here's my picture then, a rainy day, trying to give the impression of a dull day. And the techniques I used was to do the drawing first of all, but then damp the whole paper, make it really damp. And with a small, well, then I went in with my wash. So nice, cool, light color for the, the sky. This is the thing with dull days. You've got very little values to play with. It's all dreary and miserable. Um, and that's what you, you're trying to portray that feeling. But I decided to keep the sky fairly cool and then the um, the actual harbour side, the pavement, quite warm with a bit of a bit of weak alloys and crimson. And then these pots were a sort of creamish colour, so I just went in with a weak yellow, and then continue that that uh, colour down into the um, the pavement, just to imply that's a bit of reflection of um, of those pots. And then going in, everything was damp, going with a smaller brush, starting with the right hand side. You can see these, these soft edges that we've got um, in there. Do you see all these, these soft edges, which we achieve with that, that damper paper? Uh, the second thing I used was the spray. So as I was starting on the right hand side, I noticed the left hand side was getting a little bit too dry so I, I had a, a fine mist a fine mister just to spray this whole area here uh, as I was working in the middle and then by the time I came over the left hand side this this moisture level was the, the dampness was just about right for me to to start painting but you get all these lovely soft 
edges uh, inevitably as the paper dries the paint dries we do have a little bit of a few harder edges and then going with the details in the end but trying to get a, a good drawing correct um, thinking about the composition thinking about the the colors warm and cool uh, going back to composition I have my three main pots car on the right hand side figure as well and as with any painting knowing when to stop so thanks for watching catch up with you on the next video